Okay, in this segment we're going to cover a little bit more technical stuff, setting uh, the suspension adjustments the best we can make them for pulling a grooming implement. The, uh, the number one thing that we want to do, of course, is to have the suspension ride as high as possible, have it as stiff as possible to keep the weight forward. Um, snowmobile suspensions and snowmobiles in general don't weigh very much so they have a tendency to transfer weight back and forth and that's what we're trying to prevent. The first adjustment and the most critical adjustment on this sled for doing that is what they call the preload cam on the rear suspension springs. These are numbered, they've got five different positions uh, It'll probably be, as they come out of the box, they're usually in the softest position, which is number one. You can adjust them by using this wrench, which is normally found on the belt guard. You put it over this hex and you can turn that adjuster. Basically you go, you want it in number five position, which is the stiffest. What that's doing is controlling the preload on the springs and holding the rear end of the machine up. Of course, we've got the air shock here, which we mentioned before. You want that in the stiffest position also. That'll be position five that shows up on your dash. Um, another adjustment we have on the back here, the rear part of the suspension on these is what they call articulating, which means that it does this. You can lock that out by pulling this knob and turning this block. We usually leave them so they articulate because the reason they do that is so this can come up, it allows the rear of the suspension to uh, float up on the snow when you, when you back up. You'll get a little bit better traction by locking that down, but then the machine doesn't back up as well. So Another adjustment that we do have available to us that we don't use is what they call the front limiter straps. Those are is the two rubber straps that control how far down the front of the suspension goes. If you're really, really having a hard time steering, you can shorten those straps, but what happens then is you sacrifice a little bit of traction because you're basically pulling the front of the suspension up off the snow. So that's kind of what we use as a last resort. There have been some sleds where we have had to run those with the straps pulled up. These newer ones we usually start out with them in the factory position. Uh, something else that you can notice on here that's not a stock skidoo part is we have what we call ice scratchers. The reason we have those is uh, modern snowmobiles are set up where there's a plastic slider on here that runs against the metal clips on the track that supports the majority of the weight. We have a series of wheels in, incorporated in the suspension also, but they're just supplementary. They're not supporting all of the weight. The issue that we have with this system, and even trail snowmobiles have it also, is they rely on snow to lubricate this plastic slider. If you're riding or running on a very hard packed trail, and you're not getting snow thrown up, these metal clips get hot from the friction of rubbing against the plastic, and this plastic is, won't take very much temperature where it'll start to get soft. And then it'll feel like the brakes are on. And if you stop when that plastic is soft, sometimes it'll stick right to the clips, and then you'll feel like the parking brake is on. To prevent that, we have what they call ice scratchers. Basically what they are is just a little spring that's bolted to your suspension set to run in the snow or on the ice and this causes a spray of snow and ice to come up even at five miles an hour they work just fine. It basically fills your suspension with snow and ice which is to lubricate your, your sliding track going over the slide rails. So about the scratchers, the ice scratchers, this is one model. It's uh, the most common. 
They come set up like this, uh, depending where you get them, they're, I don't know, $70, $80, I guess. The one disadvantage to these that you have to remember is you can't back up with the scratchers down. It will bend them and maybe break them off either at either way it'll uh, kind of render them ineffective. So there's a couple of different models you can buy. There's one that's basically a piece of heavy steel cable that has a carbide tip on it. You can leave those down all the time because you can go forward or backwards, it doesn't hurt them. There's a couple of models that Bombardier sells that have a double spring set up, one of which would mount up here, one of which mounts up on the running board. Those you can reverse on. They are more expensive. I don't know the exact prices, but uh, they are probably preferable because it's very easy to forget that you have these down. And uh, there's a lot of situations where you should run scratchers. So it's best to have the ones that you can reverse with because everybody forgets, including us. That's why we have the package of them here. We always keep spares on hand. Okay, we got a couple, well, we got one other adjustment here, which is also important to the steering. That's your preload on your front suspension springs. That's controlled by a cam on the bottom of the spring here. And once again, our little wonder tool that Skidoo gives us is what we use to adjust it. These will come out of the crate in the softest position and basically we always crank them all the way up to the firmest position. There's five different adjustments on this preload cam. You go from the lowest to the highest. Put them in a firmest position, that puts more downward pressure on your skis, once again, to give you better steering. Um, this particular machine still has the stock runners or wear bars, whatever you want to call them, on the bottom of the skis. They come from Skidoo with carbide on them. The, the amount of carbide on your runners is not real important on a grooming snowmobile because we're not running on hard ice all the time or worried about handling, we're just worried about steering. But there is one particular brand of runner that sticks down a little bit further, is, is built to turn in snow and that's the, the manufacturer of it is Stud Boy. It's called a Shaper Bar. You can get them in four and a half inch, six inch, eight inch carbide. They get more expensive the more carbide you put on them. Like I said, it's not critical. Four and a half inches is plenty of carbide generally for grooming, but the Shaper Bar does stick down about another quarter inch. It gives you sort of like a rectangular shape on the sides to catch snow and they do benefit steering. We run them on most of our sleds whenever we replace the runners. So that's, uh, that's another steering tip that we've learned over the years. Okay, we're talking about adjustments and important things to check for your grooming machine. Uh, besides the suspension adjustments, we've got something else that's fairly important and that's your, what they call belt deflection on your drive system. That's checked and adjusted by removing our side panel. And then you pull the clip out that holds the back of the clutch guard, swivel your clutch guard and take that off. That gets you access to your clutches. What we're talking about when we say belt deflection is literally how much the belt itself moves. What that controls is how high the belt sits in your, your secondary pulley, which controls this, what they call the starting ratio on the clutch. You want it all the way to the top to give you the lowest ratio possible, which is the equivalent of starting in first gear. When, when this, the belt wears, it drops down in the pulley, this gets loose, and when the clutch engages, it's higher up in the bottom clutch. It's like starting out a manual transmission vehicle in second or third gear. It doesn't work very well. The, the adjustment on these is done with this device here. Basically, Skidoo gives you the tools that you need to do it. You've got the wrench. You loosen this uh, screw that holds this locked. And then this turns 
which is what controls your adjustment. This tool, you use your shock tool. Turn this. This has got a left-hand thread on it, so you, you're turning it to tighten when you're actually loosening it. And then you have to kind of move it around a little to see where you're going. And sometimes it helps to use neutral so you can turn it without turning the track. And it could still go a little tighter yet. Sometimes you'll find that this adjustment is not even correct when you get a brand new machine. And it's something that dealers may or may not check, and they should, but unfortunately, sometimes they don't do it. Um, if you don't, don't have somebody mechanical, to do this adjustment, you probably should learn because it is kind of important. If you get this too tight, what will happen is the belt will squeal when the machine is idling and it will make it difficult to shift the transmission. But otherwise, you want it so the, the belt is standing up out of the pulley and it's fairly snug. After you do your adjustment, you got to remember to lock down this screw. And that's basically all there is to it. Uh, as you use the sled, the belt will wear a little bit. It shouldn't wear much, but this should be checked occasionally. Um, generally, if your operators are properly trained, uh, you shouldn't destroy belts. People that are having belt problems with, with modern snowmobiles maybe have operator problems. Um, normally, like this, this sled has got 2,500 miles on it. It just finished its third season of operation. This is still the original belt on it. Like when you're operating, if, if you're hooked up to something, you hit the throttle and nothing moves in a second or two, you got something wrong. You got to get off the throttle and find out what's going on. And it's not the problem with the clutch either. Something's stuck, you're stuck, or whatever. So you just have to learn how to take care of a, a belt drive system to get the maximum life out of it and to prevent destroying belts. Uh, if, if you do get a system where it won't go and you stay on the throttle, if you ever smell smoke, probably what you've done is you burn a notch in your belt. And what that's going to do is make a vibration when the belt goes around. It's still usable. You can still get home with it, but you're not going to run, want to run it that way very long. Basically, you're probably going to want to replace that belt. So that's one of the things that could happen. Skidoo does give you a spot on the belt guard to carry a spare belt, and you should. Odds of it blowing or actually breaking are very, very slim, but it is possible. You could get a factory defective belt. You should have a spare one with you. It'll prevent having to have the machine towed out of the woods sometimes. So. Okay, one other adjustment on the front end of the machine that we normally don't deal with, but it is available. They have a spacer on the side of the, the uh, spindle. You can adjust the ski stance on these. You would want to have it with the spacer on the outside edge so that your skis are as wide apart as they can possibly be. We're looking for stability. In this, in this instance. The reason they put that in there is so the, the backcountry guys that are fitting them between the trees up in the tundra in Canada can have them narrower so they can get more places. But we're not concerned with that. We're concerned with the stability of the machine and the steering, which is better with the skis in the wide position. So actually, Rick, there's quite a bit of setup on these 
snowmobiles um, after we pick them up from from the dealer. So I guess my question to you is, why can't the dealer just set the machines up and the customer can get on them and start grooming? Uh, you are correct. There is a lot of things that need to be done. And basically what we've found is there are very few dealers who understand what we need and what we're asking for. And it seems um, a lot of dealers, even if you ask them to set it up for maximum steering, they're either not willing to put in the time or they don't know all of the adjustments or know what would make it work for our purposes. So that's one of the reasons that we made this video to try and get our knowledge out there to the people that are the end users because a lot of times you can ask for something out of your dealer and he can't provide a setup as good as we're telling you about here. So we're trying to help everybody out. And will the owner's manual go over any of the adjustments that you've talked about today with pictures or? Yes, they do. Um, you still get a paper owner's manual with all of the snowmobiles that I know of. They do have, actually they're drawings, they're not pictures, so they're a little harder to see. They do mention all of these adjustments, but they don't put them in context and say, okay, this is the, the adjustment that you want for pulling a groomer. They just say, okay, you have your rear suspension or rear spring adjustments. This is the minimum, this is the maximum. Same with the front end, you know. They tell you the adjustments, but they don't tell you what they're for. So they are in there. If you read your owner's manual, you'll come across everything that we've covered today. Well, I think uh, that was a great, um, a great video. I enjoyed uh, seeing some of the setups again and appreciate you working with us. I want to thank all the folks watching. If this video was something that was helpful to you, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And uh, we're going to be doing some other videos, uh, pulling groomers, grooming technique, and some other technical ones on side-by-sides and whatnot. But in the meanwhile, let's uh, get this snowmobile out and hook on to a groomer.